prevention is better than cure. Our focus as healthcare providers should always be to eradicate the problem followed up with finding relief for the problem. In today's video, we're going to understand the concept of prevention. If you remember, under the principles of primary healthcare, the last principle was to focus on prevention to avoid the occurrence of a disease. Prevention is an essential concept because it is important for promoting, preserving and restoring health to minimize suffering. Prevention can be done at mainly three levels, namely primary, secondary and tertiary. Let us understand each level based on the presence of risk factors, disease and disability. Primary prevention includes cases where action is taken prior to the onset of disease. Simply put, the disease is not given a chance to occur. In this level, we intervene when the risk factors for a particular disease are present, but the disease has not yet occurred. Now, in such cases, to prevent the emergence of disease, it is necessary to initiate health promotion as well as taking specific protection wherever possible. National Health Mission in India focuses on educating people about health conditions and ensuring effective healthcare through a range of interventions. This is one such health promotion program. Through these, people are educated about conditions like cancer and are made aware about the problems tobacco could cause. The public can also be educated about the importance of having a high-fiber and salt-restricted diet. In our PhD postings, we have been to multiple screening camps. These are done for a specific group of individuals. For example, while screening in schools, we provide care to those who fall in the age category of minors. This is known as specific protection. Now, specific protection could be for a whole population or only for individuals at risk. These could include screening of immigrants, ensuring proper immunizations, defluoridation of water, etc. The next level is secondary prevention. In our clinical journey, this is the category of patients that we will encounter as a majority. Secondary prevention is done in cases where both risk factors as well as the disease has occurred, but has not yet progressed to a disability. Early diagnosis, like screening or diagnostic tests, along with treatment is necessary to prevent the progression of disease into a disability. Consider a case where a patient has been diagnosed with a class 2 cavity which is not too deep. The secondary prevention in this case, to prevent its progression into gross decay, a disability, could be through simple restorative procedures or pulp capping. Lastly, we have tertiary prevention, where preventive actions are taken in cases where the disease has progressed to a disability. Moving forward, it is necessary to take up disability limiting actions along with rehabilitation for the existing disability. It is now important for us to understand how a disease could lead to impairment, further leading to a disability, which in turn can cause handicaps. Let us say a construction worker is diagnosed with untreated diabetes. This disease ultimately led to him having a diabetic foot and impairment. For the correction of this, he must undergo amputation of the lower part of his leg, leading to a disability. Now, because of this disability, the patient cannot work and may become unemployed, leading to a handicap, as this is a disadvantage for the worker caused by the disability. As discussed earlier, it is extremely necessary for the patient to undergo rehabilitation to prevent progression of the disability. This could include medical rehab, wherein the patient is helped to restore the lost function. It could also include vocational rehab, which would help with the restoration of the patient's capacity to earn his livelihood again. Although we earlier said there are three levels of prevention, but what if I tell you you can help prevent even with the occurrence of risk factors? Yes, this is possible by following something called the primordial prevention. Here, we educate the public to prevent the emergence of risk factors. This could include education regarding childhood obesity, prevention or the benefits of salt restriction in the diet, and so on and so forth. So, always remember prevention is better than cure and given any condition, there are methods of prevention which could stop the condition from getting worse. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.